Uh, how's it going everyone? Here we are, uh, session four, still working through some skin tones. Um, today I'm going to work on the portrait of Mary here. Uh, I've already blocked out the darks and the lights and from here we're going to um, get some color in there and see how we end up uh, over the next three hours. So um, if you just dropped in, uh, we're going to do it again uh, for around three-ish hours. Just see how far we get and um, we will uh, yep, see what happens. So thanks for being here. If you have questions as you go, just drop them in the chat. Uh, if you're watching this later, drop them in the, uh, the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I can. All right, um, I've already mixed up a few skin tones here. If you'd like to see that process happen, uh, you're welcome to go back to the uh, session one of the visitation series here, and we'll see. You'll see uh, that that kind of shake out. Uh, I've got uh, lead white, cad red, yellow ochre, cad red. Sorry, cad yellow, yellow ochre, cad red, cerulean, um, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and viridian. Uh, that's the palette. These are all the colors I've mixed from those colors. And I'll be primarily using these, but then I'll be adjusting them slightly as needed uh, when I'm working from uh, the source. So uh, hopefully we, we get to something um, worthwhile today, and uh, hopefully you en enjoy the time here on the stream. Please um, ask a question if you need to. And I'm going to start off kind of how I've started off in the rest of these sections where um, I'm gonna uh, do a little bit of an oil out. Um, just uh, set some some oil down. This is just a little bit of walnut oil gel I'm dipping into here, um, and and this will just cause it to give me a little bit more flow on the surface. Um, as you can see, it already is reinvigorating the. The little bit of color that's there. Uh, what you're looking at right now is a ground layer um, where these areas that are kind of um, brown color are is a ground that I laid down before anything else um, just so that I wasn't working directly onto the white gesso. So here we go. We're gonna get, uh, get going here. So uh, I did put down some uh, layers of white and, and then a few uh, darker values too in order to um, really get uh, some values that will be kind of hold up all the stuff I'm about to put on top of it. Um, I couldn't just put these, these paint colors over the top and have success. Um, on top of this uh, ground. They just need a little bit, because they are semi-transparent, so they're gonna need a little bit underneath just to uh, help them both go darker and both go lighter. Um, so without uh, any more chit chat, we're gonna get started. I like to, um, as if, you're, if you frequent the channel here, then you know full well I'm going to get started by laying in some uh, dark colors here. I need to do a little shift. There we go. Some more comfy now. So I've mixed uh, up uh, my black here with burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And so I'm going to just go right into that black. I'm using for a thinner and not using very much of it, but um, the thinner I'm using is Chelsea Classical Studios so Lavender Spike Oil Medium. And um, that is what, what I kind of start off with. So right away here, I, I'm just laying in some, some dark values. Um, kind of the, I'm searching around on my source, which you have right there uh, in your bottom left hand corner of the video. And I'm just gonna kind of put some of these 
little markers down here and there that will basically be the darkest of dark points. Um, and, and those are, those are, it's like they're fixed in a way. Once I, once I put these in, um, they just really help me gauge everything else around. So, you know, I'm hopping around finding, finding that, putting it in, um, her hair is, it's very dark. Um, and so we're going to just kind of keep, keep that right there, right there along the, the scalp, the edge of the uh, forehead. And even, even around the side here, very dark. And then we'll see if we get to some of these other shapes, but in the meanwhile, in the meantime, that uh, is a good, is a good start there. Then I just, I like to take another step in uh, finding those next uh, darkest darks. In this case, that would be, you know, the area around the eyebrows, uh, more areas around the eyes, uh, shadow on the nose. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just kind of keep working, working in that vein. A nice warm shadow here under the nose, around the eyes. I can barely make out the eyes the way she's looking down, and so um, we're not going to try to put in information in that I I can't really see or or. Uh, or make sense of. Uh, I'm gonna stick to what I what I can. Um, what the informa what information is given to me. Um, at least at this part, this blocking in stage, and and honestly, that's about it. There, we can put a little more of this in here, and maybe some of this. Uh, it's hard to tell. It's a little, it's a cooler um, dark. So it's just a little bit of, of that viridian in it. We can kind of start carrying that down. We don't want to go too far. Um, the, next, I'm going to focus on the shadows that uh, come around down the face here, underneath the lip. Um, and we'll get those uh, set in and those are a little lighter so you know I've got and it's always a bit of a trial um, and just to kind of see you know what what's working in this area and I think that's okay I think I wish it was a little more neutral so I'm going to take some of this kind of greenish mid range value and this orange here and just neutralize these two. I see a little bit of almost kind of a blue on the side of the face. And we're gonna have to come back in and you know, immediately I'm already making decisions. So it's like, okay, I, I see the color I want to get there. I'm gonna have to mix in to this a little bit, use some alizarin crimson, because it just wasn't quite warm enough, but I still want it cool. Alizarin crimson is a nice, uh, it's a cooler red. And um, so you can, you can do the impossible and make something both more red and cool at the same time. It's I'm 
There's a little darker line here before we get the reflected light uh, underneath her jaw. And probably what I'll do just to have a fixed point is grab some more of my warm dark and go ahead and come underneath here. Put that shadow into place. It'll help me decide how light I'd like to make this uh, reflected um, bit here. Hello, hello, Stephen. Uh, good to meet you. Do, do I think there are some people who just won't get portraiture? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a great question. Hey, thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Um, so I'll say there is, um, there's an artist out there. Her name is uh, Julie Beck. And while she doesn't do a whole lot of figurative work, she does some phenomenal still life um, that uh, she has really worked toward. And I, I'm guessing, Stephen, that if, uh, if you have an inclination to do portraiture and to, uh, and to work in art at all, that you have some gifting and you have some ability. Um, I, I think rarely people are drawn to it when they don't. And so I think it is always something you can cultivate. Um, and, and yes, it is something that can uh, be worked on and learned uh, given the time. And that's always, that's always the, the hard part, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going to work on this and battle around on it for, you know, the next uh, two and a half hours. And that's, that's just a hard thing to do. Um, and so, yes, I, I, I think, I think it's available to those who are artistically inclined. So if you ha already have a gifting and you can kind of see things, judge distances, maybe, you know, you were the artist in class, um, when you were growing up, I mean, I know that was me. Uh, I, uh, I, I've had to, you know, work at it quite a bit, I, you know, and that's, that's always our, one of our biggest problems is we look, we look at somebody and we say, oh, they've just always been able to do that. And, and no, uh, if you were to visit my website, you, you know, I have some older prints and things like that, that just, you know, skin, to skin tones are really orangey and pink. And I just, I didn't understand it yet. So I think it's possible, but it is, um, it's a big undertaking, a huge uh, commitment of time, um, and, and kind of resources really, because, you know, you also have to figure out how to have the time to be able to do that. And, and sometimes that can be a challenge too. So um, I do think, I will say this, uh, I do think there is uh, certain inclinations, you know, I, I've always loved the figure and, and I spent a good deal of time just studying uh, and painting from life uh, in my college days. And so, I, you know, I, I got a lot of practice in and you know that went a long way and just something in that time frame it really made me want to keep doing it um so i i knew there was yeah there was definitely some gifting um but something drew me to the figure and to people and to portraiture um that you know i just <laughs> I, I didn't uh i couldn't let go of um even after meeting other artists and they're like oh you're a figurative artist Ugh you're a hard sell, uh, you know, cause they were basically, you know, professionals who were uh, painting other things that are a little more likely to get, uh, get into people's homes. Um, and so they, they didn't pull any punches and told me you've, you've got a, you've got a long road, a hard road ahead, <laughs> but good question, man. Uh, I appreciate that. All right. So I've been uh, working on this edge here, uh, and, uh, I you know want to keep it soft. You get a little bit of reflected light. It's still a little too light, um, but I do want to bring in. Um, uh, ooh, you know I want it to be warm, um, but you know not not red or anything. But I do want it to this kind of reflected area here, and we'll just kind of see where where that takes us. I'm going to continue on the shadow of this chin 
And you'll notice that reflected line kind of blends in to that reflected light here underneath the chin, blends in to basically the shadow of, of, the, of the chin here. Um, and, th and these are the little things that I'll, I'll be looking for as I'm going just to see, you know, kind of what's, what's happening. I still like the little bit of color that I have here and I'm going to go ahead and make a, make that shadow there under her lip because my brush is already loaded with some of that. Probably about the same thing with the area underneath her nose. Um, so. Yeah, it's really fun to watch the videos when these, like if you watch uh, other professionals do time-lapse videos and then you realize, oh, whew, takes a long time to get there. And, you know, we're just immediate gratification, sort of a culture around here. It's just the one thing you don't get in this process. Okay, so I've warmed up that shadow. I'm looking around, I'm looking at her eyes and kind of looking um, at the brow and how the, um, the eye sits inside that brow. And I'm looking for some, some darker values to put in. And you'll notice this is a game of comparisons. So yeah, I was working on this area, these darks here. And when I jump to this next one, I'm thinking, okay, what changes from here to there? Well, I notice that it gets a little cooler on this side warmer in here uh, but then again there's, there's kind of some warm it's, it's and it's also a little lighter so value is kind of the most important part and so we're going to kind of keep thinking in terms of value so i'm going to take that next step and lightening things up welcome to the stream if you have uh, questions please drop them off uh, it's good to have you today It's kind of funny. There's still not um, not a whole lot happening here yet that uh, is perceivable, but it's all coming. So we really get these areas in and around around the eye. You know, I'm, I'm working with a size six brush and. I'm building, I'm working my way around. There's a little bit of a line there. I want to try to come back and, and get. Start to build there. I think we're good to kind of take another step forward in lightness. So since I just put this down, I'm going to kind of move into this area which I think will also move into some of these areas around the brow and on the side because uh, I'm trying to match this with this and there's a few areas around the eye and maybe the bottom side of the nose that also contain about that value um, which, you know, as I stated, I've mixed a few of these already um, so hopefully I could just kind of lay them in. So it looks like it looks a little cooler and greener. Um, I'm not afraid to just lay down a color um, so that I can get a good idea of really what's happening. And I won't know that until I do. Um, some people are really gifted with just laying down that perfect color, not me. Um, I've always got to fight with it a little bit. Um, so. A little, a little too green, but that's the nice thing about having Everything out here, we're working at it. I can mix that down some, and I can bring in some more of this kind of part of the brow here, which I didn't get as dark as I would have liked. So we're gonna kind of come back to that. But I can use this here around the hairline and I think this will be a good color to put on the other side here 
Yeah, detecting values and temperature shifts to create form are so subtle at points. You're absolutely right. Some tips on developing that skill and detecting them. Um, that, that's a good question, Stephen. So I, I, I think it's really a game of comparisons. Um, I mean, when, when I started out this session initially, I just put down the darkest darks I could find. So here the hairline, around the eye, um, and, and that dark dark became my fixed point. Um, and I, I th and then have tried to judge everything from that henceforth. And yeah, there's gonna be some hits and some misses. Um, and you know, we'll, we'll kind of get into that refinement later. But uh, right now, I'm kind of working my way toward the light, and that's another thing you can do. You can, um, especially in values, find those darks, move to the next darkest point that you can assess, and then kind of keep moving and keep moving. Um, Temperature-wise, I um, at some point you have to decide what what is what, um, and by that it's like if I finally say, okay, here. I've really got the temperature and the shadow of her cheek here, or I've really got it here, then I can make adjustments from my uh, from that point uh, to make it either a cooler color than I have it or not. Um, now, you're probably already saying, but what if I don't make the right assessment on that early fixed point? And you're absolutely right. That would be, that would be the, that would be the kicker is like really trying to get your fixed point that you can kind of begin comparing from. And, and yeah, that does have to be right. If you're going to start working from that as you're, as you're, as you're given. Um, and that's tough kind of some ways there's uh, no way around that. Again, trying to slowly move inward from those shadows. And and without trying, you know, this this was the next kind of gradation here um, that worked out. It doesn't always work out. I, I celebrate the victories when they happen. So again, working inward. We have to lighten this up a lot, uh, but this is probably about right on this side. Looking, looking at the lower part of her face on this side. Yeah, looking good so far. I know it's hard to tell. So, uh, it's it's also not a bad idea, uh, Stephen, if you um, if you've never tried having like a value strip. Um, I don't, usually I have one laying around to show, but I don't see it at the moment. If you have a, a value strip that just has 10% um, gradations of, uh, uh, of value, so you know, just your, a grayscale uh, with a 10% uh, onward up to you know, 70, 80, 90, uh, and then a black, right? So white to black. I'll also use that um, as something to really uh, key in um, and uh, what I'm working on. So, uh, in fact, I just remembered I've got a student coming today in 20, 40 minutes. <laughs> so, so I might have to take off earlier than I, than I anticipated like really earlier. <laughs> Amy, if you're watching, uh, I'll see you soon. Let's see. All right, I'm going to step away for just a second. If you have a question, please let me know.
Okay, we're back. All right, and now we've we've moved in um, from all these areas, and we're getting to the point where I'm going to start using some lighter values, and I'm going to switch brushes. One of the things I do here in house is I try to uh, keep as few solvents, open solvents, around as possible, and I find that. Um, it's, uh, I just don't use really a brush cleaner until the end of my session. I just wipe off my brushes. Um, and so I'll keep a brush around for darker values. I'll keep a brush for lighter values, so on and so forth. I'm gonna kind of move into some mid to lighter values. And uh, I just wanna kind of start a new brush. So that's a little lighter than I want it to be. That was probably exists about right there. Um, and it was a little too uh, light for that section that I put it on. Um, however, it would probably, you know, kind of go really well right in here. Um, and the same, if, since I have some of that on my brush, I can kind of do this sort of a thing here in and around the, the highlight of the head. So, um, and since I'm working with that, I may go ahead and make a few other calls as to where I, I see that working. Kind of works right in here, the nose. Again, still using a six. I haven't really gotten down to details yet. And I'm, I'm still what I would call a bit of blocking in. Maybe a little bit here. Maybe something just on the other side of her nose. Um, Okay, so I went to two lights. So uh, Stephen, to your question earlier, you know, I laid that color down. It was definitely too light to be here in this the slow turn of the form, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna find the next. I'm gonna kind of look at my palette here and say, okay, well, which one is it? If it's not this one, or do I just need to mix mix something fresh, which I might have to. Um, when I look at it, I you know then I, then I can assess a little bit. Okay, if it's, it's gonna do this. I might mix a little bit of uh, this color in there with it, and we'll just kind of start a, a bigger mixing pile here. It has some warmth to it, and so let's just see what this does. So that didn't do too much. Um, and so now, now that I've got some paint out there, I'm going to pull a, a color that's definitely darker just to kind of work that in. And so now I've kind of worked that in and built that up. Probably going to continue that all the way up here. Um, uh, yep, that'll work. And um, in and around the areas of the mouth, one of those things that uh, you just get used to doing is seeing the color banding um, uh, that, that's happening. And uh, color banding is a, is a cool phenomenon. It's, it's not a hard and fast rule, but um, there's generally some, some cooler areas here. Yes, even into the, into the mouth. Uh, there's some warmer areas here. And then, you know, people argue as to kind of what color and they say sergeant used this, but you know you can make colors cooler in the neck, um, and you'll end up with you know a neck that sits back in space and a head that sits forward. Um, the the warmth in and above the the cheeks and the nose, um, and then kind of a yellowy uh, forehead is, is is what they recommend. I don't I don't see the yellowy forehead as much as the cool neck, um, but that's just kind of how my eyes work. All right, so we're gonna get a little bit of color in here because right now it's really hard to see uh, exactly how much uh, intensity is happening. So since I've got my kind of mid-range brush out here, I'm gonna um, add a little bit of color to the lips. And this is, this is a really subtle thing. Um, you don't wanna like, you don't wanna take it too far uh, to, to the point that where it just doesn't work.
and I'll get back to my my brush here that is a little darker and and I'll just put um, some of this uh, and color in here and I like to especially in skin with skin tones um, I like to reserve those really intense highly chromatic colors for the areas uh, next to other areas like we're gonna make the area on her mouth this you know the line of her lips will be uh, more of an intense color because light is bouncing around in there and so we'll make it you know red and rich uh, whereas we won't do it directly on top oh we'll see we'll just kind of see where it goes um, but on the whole you don't want to overdo it um, which is uh, something that just can be easy easily done uh, we we are um, all of us, uh, and I do mean all of us, a, a a low chroma orange. All of us, so we're 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 all kind of orangey, and yes, you heard me all. <laughs> um, doesn't matter, uh, and you can mix uh, skin tones, um, almost thinking in those terms. Um, it just is really low, low chroma. We're talking the shifts that happen in skin are so subtle. Um, you just don't want to take it too far and and it not work. Okay, so I'm kind of starting to move. I'm still looking for the values that that are occurring. Um, I'm still trying to work my way toward the light. You know, I had a misstep here, so I added. Um, I put some more color there that I wouldn't have otherwise. Um, but we're working, working toward the light, going toward the light. Let's see how, yeah, that's a little too, a little too much. So that's a little better. still work a little bit of that same color into it just looks a little cooler than what I put down so it's a nice thing about having a few things pre-mixed and ready to go I can just uh, grab them and and go and hopefully make those uh, those corrections um, I'm a big fan of the the limited palette so I know this is not as limited as one can go you can do some very effective skin tones um, uh, with what they call the Zorn palette, and if, if you're familiar with it, then then you'll know just how much uh, how much of a range it has going for it. It's really nice. And I just add a little bit of warmth here. It's not so much in the source material as, as I'm putting down, but it'll, it'll, be, it'll be nice. It'll work well. Same for this side of her face. A little bit of this high, highlight here, and so what's happening now in the work is like I just am getting, um, you know, I will have in this mixing and putting down, I'll, I'll start to. Uh, just put down the color I have on my brush in certain areas because I'm like, ooh, I know that that'll work there. 
um, and then I kind of get off track on what I'm trying to do. So. And there's, a, there's just a constant searching uh, that happens here where, you know, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm making wrong decisions. That was a little too light. So I'll come back in with something just slightly darker and then I can take, take it up to the eye. Feel free to ask any questions you have. Um, believe me, it's it's uh, it's not distracting. I know some people are like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to distract you. But at this point, it's uh, it kind of happens automatically. So, so I'm probably not saying something that you'd like to know <laughs> because I'm just not thinking about it at all. Um, you know, and when I when I push an edge wrong and I'm like, Ooh, I don't like kind of how that I need to push that back a little bit. And to me, it looked a little, a little more blue right in here. So I just, I'm going to bump that back a little bit of blue. And so my, my goal, at this point in the painting is to is to really achieve coverage um, f for me I can't begin to make more informed decisions until I have something up there um, as I said I mean that's just just my my own uh, lack of ability I really got to have some color on there to help me begin to know what I need to adjust. And so in this way, this is kind of the, some people call it tiling. Right, I haven't uh, really dealt with the, the eyes very much, so I'm gonna try to get some of the, the eyelid in here. There's some nice deeper Probably not as blue as I'm about to lay down, but okay. I think I'm. I think I think I mixed it. Nope. It's a little too light. Take some of this in here. And I don't know if you remember, but I was like, okay, I know that that was that was wrong, and I'm gonna have to come back in and and work on it. And and sure enough. But I do think I can take this same kind of color, work it in down here. It's probably about the, the time for me to get out um, another brush that will allow me to work on the, the higher highlights. And um, those are take some of these down here, and um, there's kind of a nice point here. It can be there too.
and then I'm going to kind of begin working from both sides. I've got a little bit on here, and so I'll start working down, you know, and I think this can also, this light can work down a little bit here into the face. And this is all kind of drawing decisions. Um, you know, how far does the shadow go? Where, um, you know, how, how much of a gradation occurs? Um, is it, is it sharp? Does it, does that light fall off quickly or does it decay slower? Um, you know, do I even have things drawn correctly? So, you know, give her too much, you know, jowl here. So we're, so we're going to work that back. Um, and this is probably the most satisfying point uh, in the painting where um, it, it's just really things are happening quickly, they're coming together and and you're just like, all right. And everything you make always has um, the uh, don't want to offend anyone here. The the ugly teenager phase, okay, where it just where it's just not working, um, and you know in those times, you know, just don't don't get discouraged. Know that hey, I just I just haven't entered all the information yet. Um, I'll get there, um, and and when I do, it'll be a, it'll be a great piece. Um, but I've got to keep. Uh, battling away, especially um, on a thing like a face, uh, there's just a lot to do, a lot to kind of keep paying attention to, um, a lot of things to get wrong <laughs> and come back and correct. Um, that's my that's my big thing. Is you know I try as I might, I I make a lot of mistakes as I go. And I'm going to try to work in this far the shadow of the lip. Just kind of a drawing decision. Um, and the light comes down a little farther. So I'll grab my brush that had a little bit of a few, uh, some more lighter values in it. And I'm just going to kind of carry it down farther. So. I'll start working into the area where it matches, and then I'm going to just bring it down. Just it's not as uh, dark, and I still really didn't have any paint on it yet either. Um, and these are ways in which we slowly get this, slowly get this working, slowly, slowly, slowly. And you know, just still just using bigger brushes, um, you know, allowing it to be a little bit messy, allowing it to go wrong. Um, don't worry, I'm going to get out um, something a little more manageable for these smaller details, but not quite yet. We're still uh, blocking it in, but I am getting to where there's smaller, smaller details that will need to be addressed.
you might notice, you know, this cheekbone just kind of goes farther out and end up and back. It's just the way the light works. And then I'll want to connect that highlight. Fix some of my skin area kind of down in here on the chin. It's a little warmer, kind of a little, a little reddish. Probably a little too much red in there, but I'm gonna spread it around. And I'm and I'm working on an underpainting to a degree. So with that underpainting underneath. Uh, I don't have to get a lot of paint on the brush for it to begin doing what I you know, need it to do. Um, Getting there. You know, and when I go too far, when I'm like, oh, it's a little too, too gray, I can just kind of come back on top of it. I still, I still want it to be a little cooler in that area, and, and we'll come back to that. But it's all adjustable, and nice thing is, is you can kind of work into it. Um, you just have to think about your painting surface as um, being this, being a, uh, a palette itself. And I can work back into the the uh, the color over and over again. Another thing that happens in the face is sometimes uh, just lines aren't as clear or as like delineated as as we would tend to think. Like, oh, it doesn't. Um, well, there's the edge of the lip, um, but the, yeah, that's something that's just not. Sometimes it's just not there, and to and to think about it, and to try to like, oh well, I got to get it, get that in there because that's the edge of the lip. Um, can really cause you to to lose out on um, um, 
on those good lost edges uh, where things just don't quite line up and work and that's good stuff. So like on the edge of her uh, the lower lip here, there's going to be ways in which that just kind of blends in and we're not really sure where that begins or ends. Um, but, but there it does. Um, and it just kind of end up working. Same kind of on this side, it's, it just sort of mixes in with what's happening in the skin and we don't, it doesn't have to be clear. Um, in fact, the, the clearer we try to make it, the like, more likely we are to, to lose it. Um, might notice just how, I mean, if you compare, uh, Stephen, if you're still on, um, you know, me comparing like this part of the face to uh, her nose here and just how much more red uh, it is than this part of the face and darker. And so I'm kind of thinking about those two things as I uh, lay that color in. David, I hear a lot of zippers. I'm getting out of here before your student comes. I did call and I, I did message her to reschedule for next week. If you, <laughs> you're like, I'm already committed. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. Next week, next week though, for sure. <laughs> I was kind of looking around and I've got cords everywhere. I don't really even know where, <laughs> where I'd end up uh, putting the easel. Right? Yeah. So this is a, a four overall energies, a better decision for If you're watching again, Amy, I apologize. I, I am re really looking forward to working together again. All right, we're, we're starting to get into uh, smaller and smaller details. I don't know how much longer I can continue to use these bigger brushes. Um, but, um, nevertheless, still, still at it. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll fight that, um, that kind of small detail about as long as I can, realistically can do so. Because um, to me, that's where some of the energy starts to get lost. Um, and 
yeah, I just kind of battle it out until then. This is a this is an off mist area right here. Um, I think we often think, oh, uh, the eyebrow goes across the brow and um, follows the bone structure underneath, and it really doesn't. The bone structure kind of goes like this. The eyebrow goes across like this. So you're going to get this area of light right here. Um, and it's just one of those things that I, I just see, I see a lot of people miss um, in their art. So just knowing that there's a little bit of light there above uh, the eye and, and to not uh, put the eyebrow on top of that. Okay, we've got to clean up, figure out what's going on here. It's not as a, not a very hard line at all. In fact, it almost disappears right here. And then The, the hardest part with faces, especially portraiture, um, is, you know, it all comes down to millimeters. <laughs> so, sh so she's try as I may to capture the model. Um, I'm going to be millimeters off here and there, and it's just going to be wrong. Um, but, uh, you know, keep working at it. Um, if it's really important to get the, uh, the likeness, uh, use whatever tools you have at your disposal. Um, uh, on the bottom left, you're looking at a, a Photoshop image of uh, multiple different, um, pictures. Uh, Henry, you're only seeing her face right now, but if you were to see the entire composition, um, you know, it just consists of a lot of poses, uh, hands, faces, everything is a, a mismatch, mix, mix and match version of the image I want to make and ultimately hope to achieve. But that gives me a good idea of what it's uh, what it's gonna do. All right, I think it's I think we're there. Gonna get out some smaller brushes. Although I am I am happy right now with how it's how it's going. I always get a little sad at this point. Why can't we just? I suppose we can, right? It's my painting. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> All that. Um, but I want to keep. I want to keep some of this brush energy, but I also want to spend a little more time um, uh, capturing some of the details that will um, be satisfying when it's seen up close. I do have the luxury of knowing the painting is going to go um, in, a, in a high vantage point, um, and so. Um, I can kind of keep those sort of things in mind while I'm working. Okay. Again, if you just joined us, um, please uh, drop a question off. I'm, I'm still establishing some of the major values and um, you know, I want to get some of these highlights in just as I keep working.
the area, the forehead here, you know, we'll have a chance to really Just kind of big diffused highlight, a little bit of it lands right here, and the rest of it kind of sits just a little bit right in here. Um, and you know, that's essentially what, I, what I'm doing at this point is, is just searching for those uh, shape and space identifiers. Um, I'll have to go in a little closer. So a little on the other side here. Seems like a bit much, but I'll wipe off my brush again. So I can kind of work that into what's there. There we go. Those home hoes and hums are always like, okay, where to next in this grand building? Um, of this image. I'm gonna work on the hairline up there just a little bit. And so I see this little cool a blue, blue line, right as a, yep, not, not dark enough. So there's a, Hey, I think it's time to work on some smaller details. So um, the, the bulk of the work has been done. I'm gonna have to get out a little bit of a brush to uh, achieve a, a good uh, finish and um, especially around the eyes. Uh, I think I've got a little bit of so maybe a small drawing adjustment to make here and there to make that work a little more effectively. And, and that'll be those ongoing changes that I make um, as I go. So uh, I'm happy where kind of where everything is at the moment. And um, now it's time to refine the area around the eyes. And by refine it, you know, we're not gonna do a whole lot. It's not, um, you know, the way she's looking down, I can't make out. Uh, what's occurring and that's okay. So I'm gonna prep a couple of smaller brushes to just get in here and get, get a little specific. Um,
and these are some of the places that you can put in a little more um, intense color. Um, it's going to be really hard to really make any of that out. Um, while I've got some of this on my brush, I can I can go ahead and come down here and kind of do what I intended to do. Make that uh, lip line. Kind of use more of that red, and, and you'll see that you know I, I didn't really do much there, but all of a sudden there's a lot more color there, and, and what we understand, kind of whether we realize it or not, is is, is that's that's how that's how it works uh, in. In the figure, that, that color is usually when certain areas, especially in a face or skin tones, where color is really very, you know, near neutral, um, it's in those spaces that we start to really see where you know two red lips are, are the lightest, um, kind of bouncing around against areas where there's a lot of blood flowing through areas in and around the nose. Uh, and those areas will be redder, ruddier um, uh, than, than others. And I will continue to work back and forth here. as best I can, as I can make out. Some of these details. Um, this is a moment where it's, it's a good thing and it's beneficial if you are a little familiar with the anatomy of the eye. Um, so that even where, you know, I, I can only make out so much information, but um, I can I can still focus on those parts that I know are important. Like, you know I do have a nice harder line right here that kind of breaks up, and, and you'll see how these as I, as I continue to put. Um, these changes in. You're, you're going to watch uh, it kind of slowly materialize and I mean, the good thing is, is it's working already. Um, so, I mean, that's right. That's part of the battle anyway, you know, is, is, uh, does it seem to be working now? Um, and if it is, okay, good. Then if we just refine a few things, try not to make too many mistakes as we go. You know, and none of this that I'm putting down is very light. It's all, it's all really dark. It's it's warm.
little, little changes. So all I'm doing is focusing on this one spot. I've kind of set everything else aside, knowing that, all right, I'm going to get to, um, to those other parts as needed. Uh, but right now it's just, uh, I'm kind of laser focused on this one eye until basically until I get distracted enough to uh, move on to something else. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take uh, it's a little, little you know, buffer brush. Because say I do like this, but I think it just needs to, I just need to pull some of that color in and around that uh, a little bit. And I'll just pull that. And I'll, but I'll keep this edge because I, I like that, that harder edge there. But I want to just soften this and really pull it around. Um, kind of work with what's there. Um, and uh, it ends up, uh, it ends up working sometimes. Uh, and that time uh, I'm, I'm happy with how it turned out. So I've got our eyebrow a little too dark and again, we're trying to see things as they are, not as we think we see them. <laughs> Uh, and um, it seems to be kind of lightened along this section here. And then as it turns that corner, you can kind of see as it turns into the shadow, it's really subtle. I know your, your picture down there is really small, but it just turns a little warm, warm and uh, orange. So I'll take a little burnt sienna and just try to darken this side of it some. And so that the eyebrow too is telling us about how that, um, this, uh, the brow here that's kind of coming through here in the skull, uh, the eyebrow too is following following that around. Got a little bit of and I'm, I just still have some of the ground layer showing here and there and so I want to make sure that I'm um, adequately covering that. That's not that gr ground layer. What I'm talking about is this. It's uh, what I started with before I it began. I just laid all this on and then drew on top of that. And that just allows me to start on something that is not bright white and really hard to mix colors into and against. Um, All right. All right, deciding next move, next move. Okay, we're gonna kind of work on the eyelid a little bit. I've got a little too much of a highlight there. Still my underpainting really showing through. So I'm just gonna to begin to knock that down some. I mean, you can still be there, uh, it's just a little too much.
some of these areas in here is like, oops, I just didn't get this finished. Oh, that does start to get pretty dark there. See, I've got a little more, since I'm in working around, uh, the highlight goes a little farther up here. It also needs to get toned down. As soon as I find the right color. dark in here. Okay, some nice highlights there on the, the middle of the eye, kind of very, very yellowy.
what little detail I can make out here. I'll try to get in there. Okay. All right. I think that's just about it on that one. Um, I might get out my little buffer here. Okay, I'm gonna move to the other eye. Um, one eye is usually not the problem. <laughs> it's two eyes, We're working uh, working those together so that uh, so that they work, and that's where that's where it gets tough. All right, so I'm gonna. Uh, the eyebrows, we had way too hard right now. There's just um, still too, which is really, I think, still just the original uh, paint or from the underpainting on top of it. So if, that's the first thing that bugs me. So we're going to really work into that some so that. It's um, matching. Working, uh, refining this this part of the eye. Um, paying attention to just some of the little cues here. Um, lines a little hard there. Probably going to need to bring it back up a little bit. Just not as rounded as as it needs to be. When I don't want to look at uh, kind of the drawing, the distance between you know this space. Um, you know, draw drawing is kind of constantly happening, even though I'm painting. I'm saying, "Ooh, that this is about this far away. This looks like about this far away." Okay, yep, that's it. And um, then we always hope that we get there. You just popped in. Uh, drop a drop a message off and uh, let me know uh, if there's anything you have a question about. Just want to be be helpful toward you uh, and in your art making. So you can see that underpainting doesn't want to go. It says, "Hey, you put me under here for you put me on here reason for a reason. Don't don't hide me." So I'll just get a little thicker. Um, just giving a toning it down just a little bit so that um, you know this one reads closer, that one reads farther away.
the hair here. Not trying to go overboard. Soften this edge, it just looks like it I've got a little too hard. And we want that to feel like it's back there. Soften it, I'll send it back a little bit. Also that kind of each one of those uh, values is is telling us where things are corresponding uh, to the light. And that's uh, going to be a big part of it. So those little changes. Okay, I'm going to continue to work through spent the last uh, 30 minutes or so working on the eyes. Um, got about another hour or so in my in my day here. Um, so just kind of letting you know if you're it's probably how long I'm going to be sticking around. So I really hope, or at least the plan is uh, this to be to be accomplished just here you know okay um, it is good and you can move on to the next area probably won't get to the neck um, just looking at my time and uh, knowing my intentions so that will just have to remain undone today So a lot of looking back and forth. If if you're not seeing my head uh, move into the camera frame, uh, it's it's just a lot of searching. I want to know what needs to be addressed. Uh, you know, I need to move this highlight a little farther this way. Um, And into the eye there. It goes across quite a bit of it. Uh, this lighter area. And I'm gonna keep moving my my brush following following that form. Um, same for the areas above and around it. Deciding where and what I want to pull from. In fact, if I want, just kind of angle of the eye. So this is a, it's a great moment to like be like, okay, this this turns this way more um, than I than I have it. And these are these are those minute changes that are, are really imperceptible but That are happening. Um, I usually try to keep a, um, a mirror around somewhere. 
think it's all the way over there by David. <laughs> if, if he's if he's feeling nice. Uh, uh, yeah. Thank you, my friend. All right, the mirror. If you don't have one in your studio, um, you got to do that. Uh, the mirror is so helpful in giving you a quick critique, allowing you to just take a look and assess the painting, see if anything looks strange or out of place, and then um, saying, "Okay, yep, ready to ready to move on." Thanks, David. Okay. Again. harder edges can really which is areas that I just haven't quite dealt with and told you I'd get distracted from working on the eye that's what I'm supposed to be working on right now anyway
gonna soften these eyes a little bit. You know, my, my initial block in uh, was fine. Just really needs to not be quite so These are usually the times that I, I get pretty quiet, only because I'm just searching, fighting, finding those those next little bits of information. Um, it, it's kind of hard to talk about the process here, you know, my um, other than kind of repeating some of the things I've already said. So a lot of back and forth, um, searching, you know, what's what's working, what's not. It, and really I'm looking at the painting mostly and I'm saying, okay, something doesn't really work right there for me. Why is that? And then I look to the source material and I say, okay, maybe it's because of that. Um, and so, you know, then I'll see a little thing that I'll say, all right, let's see if that does it. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but like, you know, just kind of looking here it looks like this just extends a little farther than than I than I have it here, um, and and so I'm gonna work this this way some and just see if that messes things up because it can. That's the other thing it can do. All of a sudden. It can be like, oh, uh, what was working is, is now not. And that's part of painting. Painting faces, um, that, uh, sometimes it's there. You make one adjustment and you're like, what? How could that have affected where the nose is or whatever? <laughs> and all of a sudden you're, you've got a brand new fight on your hand trying to figure out what happened. Um, so not for the faint of heart, um, painting the portrait, painting the figure, it's a lot that can go wrong. All right, I think, uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty close to, to done on the, on the eyes here. Um, to take my little buffer brush, clean up a few edges. And you notice I, I take the brush and I try to follow the form. Um, I just wanna kind of come around here. Um, and I'm not trying to erase the brushwork necessarily. Um, but I am trying to create just a few more lines that follow 
uh, the form of the face that hopefully, along with the rendering, tell us what's happening uh, with, um, with the model. with these areas so I'm gonna do just a little bit of that motion that I was talking about I might have to come back in here there's some edges here that are I can kind of go in the other direction some and that you know that that helped um, so if I'm not cross hatching cross hatching this way you know uh, making the mark here, I can kind of make the mark this way. Um, um, maybe kind of across here, I'd probably do about the same. I'm going to move into the nose next. so bad I mean it's mostly it's mostly there so it's probably just a little, little things that I've missed in, uh, in rendering probably that highlights a little farther this way and I put it in so Sometimes I get a little chip of dried paint. There's no way you're going to see it, but I'll see it. It's right there. Oh. See, I lifted that off and all of a sudden it's so bright. So I'll have to come in with something pretty thick to get coverage there. Trying to see what I can dig into and get a good amount of paint on. Okay, so that'll work for coverage for that. Um, but if I if I rake across that, it will uh, it'll show up again. So. There's a little bit of a high. Um, just an area right here. It's a little lighter that you can make out. Um, here's another great case for a really warm, warm shadow in here. I mean, we can, you can take like direct alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, um, and you can just really lay that color in there and uh, and it works. Um, so I kind of wiped off the brush so that now it has just some residual, so I can kind of soften it as it comes around here. Same for this shadow uh, in the nose. You can you can uh, put quite a bit of uh, warmth into it. 
um, and and it works because we you know we have light is it's working its way through there and um, so you don't have to be hesitant to uh, give it uh, give it a little more intensity um, and as, as I've stated uh, you just you keep you keep those parts uh, a little more um, sparing in, when you're working uh, on skin tones. Just don't don't overdo it because that's the easy thing to do. <laughs> it's easy to overdo it. Um, and you know, I kind of like this side as it already is. It's just utilizing some of the um, underpainting. It's making it cool. Uh, to me, it looks a little cooler on that side. So, I mean, those are the n nice points where you just got to say, hey, that's working, and I'm out. <laughs> Good enough to move on. Get mo. Moving my way down, um, maybe not, maybe not quite yet. Sometimes I'll just exaggerate a little more warmth and redness here. Right, and then into the lips. Uh, got some work to do on the lips and chin. 
And um, once we wrap that up, uh, forehead and, um, you know, if that's there, uh, then, you know, we can, might be able to block in some of the hair or we'll just cross all those bridges when we get to them. Probably have another 50 minutes or so here. Again, if you just joined, uh, drop a message, say hi, um, ask a question, and um, uh, let me know what, what you want to know. I don't know what you want to know. Um, I'll probably keep talking about stuff that uh, isn't helpful um, if you don't let me know. Not on purpose. I'll just I'll get distracted. Um, Kind of work around uh, this area a little more. This side of the face, um, I tend to make a little cooler um, so that it's kind of moving this way, more kind of warmer here, a little cooler uh, on that side. Um, it's not always something that I see, but you know, you've got a little bit of wiggle room to make that sort of a thing happen. Um, and um, uh, uh, it can work, work really well for you. do have to block in and decide what I'm going to do with the, the upper lip. Um, I'm going to set down some brushes because I've been holding them with my left hand for a long time. <laughs> um, So there's definitely more color than I have in there, and I don't want to overdo it, um, but I, I will start just kind of building on top of what I have there already. Um, And it's darker, which um, you know just benefits the use of the alizarin crimson here, because I can get that upper lip to be a little darker, especially here as it turns into the corner of the mouth. And can bring it this way. And we do get a little bit of that lighter. Um, top upper part of the lip I still try to be a little careful and not overdo it um, you know it's a lot closer to the same value as the skin like up here the edge is you know gets fairly soft especially in some of these spaces um,
getting a little bit of a reflection. Sometimes the, the buffer brush is nice to uh, like knock down a reflection and that allows me to see uh, just a, with the lights. So this little buffer brush is nice if you're getting um, just some, some areas that are like, uh, I can't quite see what's happening there. Kind of don't like something I just saw here. Uh, a little too vague here on the nose. The shadows is dark on this side. Um, I definitely need to tell what's happening on the underside of this. Sometimes those are just the little details that uh, get missed. And I can barely make out another edge of a nostril on this side. I don't know if that did it or not, but we're gonna leave it in there. Doing better, doing better all the time. We're getting there. And I'm using that, that lizard crimson. I'm gonna get um, just this edge, this barely. And that that color, while it'll be hard to see, and, and um, it, it will it will work, and it will will show up. Get out the mirror again and just look, see. And here are the times that I see something that it, it bug bugs me. Um, this is the on her left side, the mouth, uh, just that that lower lip. And those are the times that I just I kind of go back to the source and I just say, okay, what is it? I think I. I think this needs to carry out farther and already you know that that helped it for me so 
maybe not as well I can definitely say it's not as um, uh, uh, and uh, it's not nearly as dark there um, and that's just one of those things that can kind of happen in the process while while you're working on uh, on this I think I think I'm fairly happy with that. Let's see if it's improved. Go back to my mirror. Yep. Yep, I'm happy with that. Hey, you you all on the on the stream too. I mean, you you have a uh, something doesn't look right you gotta, gotta speak up now or you're, you're likely to just let a, a really weird spot go You gotta be my uh, my critri uh, critique uh, out there. So, all right, I'm gonna work on the forehead a little bit and uh, just kind of clear up some of the angularness uh, in and around here, um, and uh, we'll see where we see where we go. Thanks for uh, those of you hanging around and, and watching. Appreciate it. clean up some of the uh, brushwork. I don't mind some of the angular movements. Um, I like, and I, I, you know, I was, I'm always a fan of something a little more um, hard angled. And, you know, when I uh, begin working on other areas here, um, you'll, uh, you'll see a lot of it, um, of like fabric and I, I just tend to give it a little more, uh, harder edges, not quite as curvilinear. Um, and I just, I don't know. I like that.
edge is a little darker. Alright, I think been, uh, with the remaining uh, few minutes I have, I may try to get some of the hair, um, the hair in, and just kind of see where see where we end up. Um, and this is a process of really. Uh, hair is always, I, I enjoy it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I just really try to keep it loose, let let um, I might have to adjust the camera a little bit. I'm getting a some glare from this height. So I'm going to drop this one or two. Kind of see where that ends up. See if I can crank the camera down some. There we go. All right, that's better. I can actually see now. I think what I'm going to do is leave some of this underpainting dark and in certain areas because uh, it's creating some of the energy uh, that I need and really why waste a good thing? might try to get just a few of what I would call the scalp lines or just a little bit of just start a little darker than that. Realize I haven't really put the put the ear in yet.
much has to be there. Um, probably see two. Some of the mark there do do enough, and really, once uh, the kind of the head covering is is in place, then um, that should really wrap around there nicely. And I don't think I'll really need to do too much more to that. There's always oh the the time where I'm kind of asking myself okay really how much more do I want to do because um, I, I have satisfaction with the piece and I, I think it's it's turning out pretty good so I think um, I may start there for today and uh, I just want to say thank you for watching and hanging out or or just being a being a part of the stream. Thank you for those who asked questions. If you're um, on later um, and you see this video uh, on another day, um, don't don't feel shy. Just get in there, drop your question, and um, and uh, I'll uh, I'll answer it in the comments. So, everyone, uh, uh, blessings on the day, and um, we'll see you next time, whenever that may be. Thanks.